Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Here in the Silver Bullet, we're doing our first Technical Tuesday video. So this will be a video that I put up on Tuesdays that goes into a specific piece of gear or a technique or just something really cool that I like, that I encountered, that I want to share with you guys. And it gives me an opportunity to go into great detail. A lot of times when I'm filming these videos out on the water in the woods, I sometimes just forget to go into the technical things that some of you really like, some of you don't care to know the full details, but, and I've just done it. I mean, I've done this over 10 years, so I don't often remember to explain things fully every time to everyone. So that's what we're gonna be doing on these Technical Tuesdays. So what I wanna do in today's video is go into my full setup for a weightless rig. And I, I really prefer to throw weightless plastics on spinning gear. Sometimes I'll throw them on, on bait casting gear uh, here in Texas when we've got just thick timber. I really just wanna you know wrench on some fish with a big line or something like that. But most of the time, you get way more bites doing this, is throwing that lighter line, that lighter setup. Uh, and the lighter your line is to the weight of your bait, you can just fling it really, really well. So I'm gonna go from literally the hook to the real, the full explanation here. So uh, first of all, this is my spinning combo. Um, and uh, many of you have asked about this, this reel now. Still got like a testing number on it. Testing number seven. It's the only one I have, so I'll, I'll remember that. Um, but this, this reel is something that we are working on that I feel like is really close. We've been working on this with Catchco. Um, it's, I can go into full details on a later video, but I've been impressed with the aspects of it and, uh, haven't had any boo-boos really to speak of. Um, so anyway, spinning reel, this is a 2000 size. So 2000 size spinning reel on a, uh, spinning rod. This is a seven foot, just standard issue, seven foot. This is our Guggen Squad green series rod. So this is our entry level and this is the finesse. Uh, we have a finesse and a finesse light, but the really light one, the finesse light, that's better for uh, like drop shotting, strictly drop shotting and, and really light finesse. Uh, I like the, the standard finesse, which is I think just a medium. It's gonna be, yeah, it's a seven foot medium power, but a fast action. The power is important. You want that medium. So I don't want to go with a full light. I know you guys can't see this full flex in this rod. I don't go with a full light because, uh, especially if I'm throwing a hook that I still need to set the hook through the plastic, I want to have a little bit of beef on the rod, um, but I still want to be able to fling it out there very easily. And uh, you can't just throw a real heavy setup with the spinning rig, it doesn't work too well. So this setup right here, I really love. I get asked about line all the time. What's that yellow line you're using? And I'm finally gonna address that here. So it is, it is our Guggen Squad line that we work with uh, on, on, we work with Ketchco on making this, but you know, I get sent samples of things and different baits and different products and this is just samples of our line of the braid that is an eight strand, uh, but it is in this orange yellow color. And the reason that I like this color is because I can see it. It stands out to me. So if I'm looking at my line when I'm throwing a weightless bait, I can see if there's any kind of little movement side to side. I can watch it twitch. I really like it for crappie fishing looking at those little twitches. So we've got a uh, chartreuse and an orange. Unfortunately, this is not available. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a fluorescent colored line. In terms of the size of braid, this is really important. I like to start with 20 for most of my weightless plastic rigs. If I'm crappie fishing, I like to go down to 10. Maybe I'll do 12 pound braid, but I like to start at 20. 30 gets a little thick for the spinning combo, in, in my opinion, 20 allows you to cast like a dream. That's really where it shines, especially when you wanna start skipping up under docks uh, and 
you know, just casting this thing a really long way and take full advantage of the spinning setup, 20 pound braid is awesome. And because uh, our braid is eight strand, uh, it casts really well. It's, it's more round, so it goes through the guides better. Um, four strand, just so you guys know, four strand is often uh, more abrasion resistant and better for like heavy flipping. If you're flipping like docks or heavy timber, something like that, that's when a four strand is better. An eight strand is just a better overall caster. You get better performance with it, but it is less abrasive resistant. So 20 pound uh, Guggen Squad eight strand braid. Now I also like to use a leader line attached to that. And often I'll use 12 pound. A uh, 12 pound works really well with the 20 pound braid. Sometimes I'll go up to 15. Uh, if I've got you know a lot of docks, maybe some standing timber, something like that. Uh, if you want to go down to really light lines, say you're fishing super clear water and want to use braid, then I would probably drop a rod power and go with you know eight, six pound fluorocarbon to like 12 pound braid, 15 pound pound braid. Those combos are going to work out a little bit better. But this combo that I'm talking about here. This medium power with the 20 pound braid with a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader, that's gonna work really well, I think, for most people across the country. So let's talk about what kind of fluorocarbon line I use. Uh, I do use our Guggen Squad fluorocarbon uh, just in a pinch when you know I'm in the boat, just gotta re-rig real quick. But if I have the time, I like to use a dedicated fluorocarbon. Uh, because a castable fluorocarbon is not going to be as strong as a pure fluorocarbon leader, like something that you would use in saltwater fishing, because there is no, there's hardly any castability to this. If you were trying to just pull this onto your reel, you'd have a very difficult time casting it because it has better properties for abrasive resistance. It's very tough, I don't wanna break off, that's the point. So you sacrifice that when you put in castability into fluorocarbon. It's all about the extrusion process. That's a, that's a thing for a whole other video. But this is 12 pound dedicated uh, Seaguar gold label right here. Um, I'll sometimes use this, use this for crappie fishing as well with like a six or an eight as a dedicated leader. And I'll go about four or five foot. You know, not quite a rod's, rod's length. Uh, with that four or five foot, that enables me to make pitches do roll casts with it, uh, sometimes without even having the knot go through the, uh, the eyes of the rod. But the, the knot is the next big thing to this. And what I like to use to connect these two lines is an Alberto knot. So I learned this knot about three or four years ago. Uh, I was using a Uni Uni splice and the Uni Uni splice works okay but after a while of casting it through the guides, it does start to get a little wear. And I've just noticed that, you know, if I get snagged um, and I pull on it real hard, I definitely break the Uni Uni splice more than I do the Alberto knot. So Alberto is really simple. You know, once you do it a few times, uh, you'll be able to, to master it. And what I like about it is it does go through the, the guides really well. If you wanted to get really crazy you could go with like an fg knot <laughs> it'd probably take me an hour to tie that it's not something i i want to do in the garage or on the boat but i find that the alberto knot works pretty darn good so let's actually go through that process real quick i'll have a detailed view of this where you guys can see it up close but i needed to rig this pole anyways after a guggen week Things always get broken and trashed and lures are all over the place and I have to sit down and rig things. It's usually pretty crazy. This last Guggen week was particularly insane. I just found some cat food in my boat. So I've got my braid. I want to give myself plenty of room to work with, set that off to the side. Now what you want to do with the fluorocarbon leader is take it and make a loop on the end. And then you're going to take your braid, and the braid is very limp, right? So 
this is how you can remember this. Which, which end do I tie the loop on? You tie the loop or you make the loop on the stiffer line, which is the fluorocarbon. Then you're gonna take that loose line, that braid, you're gonna go through the loop. And I like to pinch that. Pull the braid up, give myself a little room. And this is the simplest thing ever. You're just gonna make wraps. And I'm gonna make about eight or nine wraps. There's three, four, five. And when you're doing these, make sure you're not overlapping. You just wanna go right next to the last loop. I lost track of how many I got here. But the main thing is you don't want those to overlap. Then you wanna take that tag in and you wanna go back through your loop uh, the same direction that your main line is going in. Uh, both your tag in and your main line that are coming through uh, the same way. So then start pulling the fluoro and the braid. You can wet it a little bit. Slide it. You'll notice it'll slide pretty easy. And it's just wrapped around those two pieces of fluorocarbon. What I also like about this knot is it's not, it's not making like a big, um, there's, no, there's no cinching it feels like. Like it, go, it goes down smooth. You know, sometimes you'll tie a knot and then you'll notice a little color change in your line, like where there's some, some pressure. Uh, this is almost like just a constrictor knot so it's not doing that at all. All right, cut your line, get a little bit of fluorocarbon tag in, just a tiny, tiny bit, and then I'll leave more of the braid because the braid will fray. It's not gonna mess up your casting. I'll leave, you know, up to an eighth of an inch on there sometimes. Give it one final tightening, and then you're good to go. All right, so now we have our fluorocarbon end and we need a hook. Now this is gonna depend on what kind of fishing you wanna do. Uh, here lately I've been doing more open water fishing, uh, some wacky rigging. A wacky rig is, is never a bad idea, um, but you could also fish a, uh, a regular style worm hook, you know, fish a uh, fluke style bait, like a dart. So just to keep continuity to uh, the last video I uploaded where I was fishing a, a wacky rig a lot. Uh, I was throwing a black with red flake lunker log, five inch. Actually got one right here. So I'll break that out. And what I, what I was not doing in the video was I wasn't uh, putting a ring on that bait, which will, will save you uh, some plastics. It'll also uh, enable you to just fling the hell out of it, like skip it up under docks. And I really like using the rings. But regardless of that, we're gonna use a wacky style hook or a finesse style hook. Oh, we have a couple different sizes and finesse hooks with our Guggen Squad uh, terminal tackle. You know, I've got um, I can't remember what these are, if this is a size one or a one aught. Um, but this hook that I'm using right here that you saw me using in the last video, this is a, a finesse, uh, like open drop shot, nose hooking drop shot, uh, wacky style hook. This is the one that I really like to use. There's a, there's a bit of an offset to it, which is great when you're wacky rigging. And you would be shocked at how many big fish you'll catch on a tiny little hook like that. Now, the problem with not using the ring is sometimes the fish, when they bite down on a lunker log or whatever it is, they can fold it, they can squish it and sort of change the, the shape and end up uh, making your hook set a little wonky where that, that hook is going a different direction or going back into the plastic. And that's just part of wacky rigging. The, the ring really uh, stops a lot of it. I'm gonna say 85% of it, not all of it, um, but it definitely helps. Now, the knot that I'm gonna tie on the hook is a knot that I tie 90% of the time, and that is a uni knot. 
it is the simplest knot. Uh, again, I love knots that don't put friction on my line when I am tighten tightening them down. And this is one of those knots that I've, I mean, I've tied it for over 10 years on bass baits. And I can honestly say there's only been like a handful of times where the knot has actually broken and not even on a fish, like just straight pulling it. Other than that, um, it's just such a solid knot because as I tighten this knot down, there's, there's no resistance towards the base of the knot. Like a Palomar, uh, other types of knots where it's, it's, it's constricting right there at the base um, and you'll see a little like a little kink in your line close to the line tie I don't you can look at this knot there is no kink it is just uh, you know it's perfectly tied on there with no crimps no little uh, areas of stress on it no opaqueness either the only downside to that knot is if you are fishing around grass the tag in sticks straight out towards your your main line so it can sort of catch on vegetation every once in a while on the ring i'm sure everyone has seen these but you know what this thing is you stick it on the plastic slide your little ring on there and now they have ones that have pliers that you can stick on there a little easier than this but slap that uh, pretty much in the middle i'm gonna say on our baits it's uh, it's right on the end of Guggen. That's gonna be the, uh, the midway point. Sort of go in at, a, at an angle, not quite a 45, but just go through the plastic and go through that ring. Just a little bit of plastic and go through that ring and that baby is, is ready to dangle right there. Ready to catch them. So that is my complete setup for fishing weightless baits on spinning gear. Uh, if you guys have any questions, any, uh, anything else that you want to see for another Technical Tuesday, let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys want to pick up any of the gear that I'm using, you can go to GuggenSquad.com. It's linked down below. You can use my promo code LFG. It saves you 10% off, so you can use that code at checkout if you want to get any of the gear. And thank you guys for tuning in to the first official Technical Tuesday here on the channel. As always, Godspeed in all of your adventures, and we'll see you on the next one.